Hi everyone, so today in this video we're going to be looking at a question in which we have to deal with a functional equation with multiple functions. Now essentially till now we have only been dealing with a single function, right? So for example, f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. This is obviously the additive Cauchy's functional equation. The solution is f of x equals to a linear function ax plus b. But uh, linear function is additive. But other than that, essentially, this is only a functional equation, one variable, yeah, I'm sorry, in one function. So f is the function, and it's the only function over here, right? We have two variables, x and y, but essentially the function is f. But in this question, we're going to have two functions, right? f and g, right? f and g, we're going to have two functions, then we're going to see how we can deal with that. Okay, so this is the problem number A3, so algebra 3 from the IMO shortlist in 2011. And in this video, we're going to be looking at functional equations with multiple functions. So the underlying objective is to maybe form certain relation between the two functions. Maybe try to write one function with respect to another function in terms of the other function. And then maybe try to reduce the given functional equation, which is in two functions, to maybe just one function. Then find one function, just plug it into the equation relating into the second function, find both functions, that's it, right? And after that, we have certain problem solving techniques of functional equations, then book sessions of functional equations, and at the end, a civil level challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so what does this question say? So we need to determine all pairs f comma g of functions from reals to reals so that they satisfy this given functional equation for all reals x comma y. So we have g of f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus 2x plus y times g of y. Okay, great. So maybe let's just start with some substitutions. So let's start with something basic. Maybe let's just put in x equal to 0 and maybe y is equal to x. You could plug in y is equal to y also doesn't really matter, but I like dealing with x's so it's more comfortable that way. So you get g of f of x is equal to f of 0 plus x times g of x. And f of 0 is f of 0. f of 0 is just a constant, right? So maybe let's just define f of 0 as some, some constant. Let's just plug it in as c, right? So essentially, you get g of f of x is equal to x times g of x plus c. Again, we're dealing with two functions, f and g over here. But we essentially reduce this down to one variable. Okay, great. Maybe let's just plug in something else. Maybe put in x equals to x and maybe plug in y is equal to 0. The reason I do that is because the left hand side will be similar. Right? Here we put in x0, y x. Now we're going to x x and y 0. Right? So the left hand side will actually be similar. It will be the same in fact. So g of f of x is equal to, this time we'll get f of x plus 2x times g of 0. Now again, g of 0 is nothing but a constant. So let me just define maybe g of 0 as a. Here we took it as c. So g of 0 is equal to a, right? So basically, g of f of x is equal to how much? f of x plus 2ax, and that's equation number 2. Great, so now that we've reached up to that point, if you see the left-hand side of the equation 2 and the left-hand side of equation 1 are the same, so you can equate the right-hand sides. So x times g of x plus c is actually equal to f of x plus 2ax. Now this is great because this is the step one that I was referring to earlier. Relate the two functions. Now g of x and f of x are actually related. So for example, I can write f of x as x times g of x minus 2ax plus c. Now if I find out maybe g of x, I can just plug it into this equation to find f of x. Similarly, if I find f of x, I can plug it into this equation to find g of x. So you know, part one of our work is done. Okay, great. What next? Maybe let's just, if you actually notice in the functional equation, the left hand side is kind of symmetric, right? You have x plus y over here. So maybe whenever you have this one side symmetric, what you can do is maybe plug in x equals to y and y is equal to x. Because that really cancels out a lot of terms. So as you see, you'll get g of f of x plus y on the left hand side, right? Over here, you'll get f of y plus 2y plus x times g of x. And what is the original functional equation? It was g of f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus 2x plus y times g of y. So you basically replaced uh, x with y and y with x over here. 
again left hand side is in both these equations are the same you can just equate the right hand side very conveniently so you can write f of x plus 2x plus y times g of y is equal to is equal to f of y plus 2y plus x times g of x okay great what next now 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 in equation number three over here i actually found a relation right so over here in uh, in this equation let me just label that maybe number four i'm going to substitute what we had received above so this from equation number three i'm going to plug it in into equation number four and once i do that i actually get something quite cool so x times g of x plus c minus 2x plus 2x plus y times g of y this is the left hand side and right hand side becomes y times g of y plus c minus 2a y plus 2y plus x into g of x okay perfect and now you can see certain terms getting cancelled also this c and c gets cancelled and once i maybe like expand this out and write so x times g of x minus 2ax plus 2x times g of y plus y times g of y the right hand side we have y times g of y minus 2ay plus 2y times g of x plus x times g of x quite a few things gets cancelled right x times g of x this this gets cancelled so what do we have left after all of this cancellation that we have done what do we have left we have 2x times g of y minus 2ax is equal to 2y times g of x minus 2ay let me just cancel the two from all four sides and maybe let's take x common over here i'll get g of y minus a and if i take y common over here i'll get g of x minus a most of our work is done now i can just very conveniently plug in y is equal to 1 and one, once i do that i'll get x times g of 1 minus a is equal to g of x minus a and there you go you have actually found out the value of g of x x times g of 1 minus a plus a so you can actually see that g is linear why because this is a constant g of 1 minus a is a constant and maybe if i define that to be something so we have defined certain quantities right so we have defined a is equal to g of 0 we defined c is equal to f of 0 let me just define b as g of 1 minus a which is f of 0 so g of x is nothing but bx plus a okay great now 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 from equation 3 which is the equation relating g and f we have f of x equal to c plus x times g of x which is bx plus a minus 2ax and maybe once you simplify this you will get f of x equals to bx squared minus ax plus c and obviously g of x is equal to bx plus a now at this point all we really need to do is find a comma b comma c what values they might hold and to do this obviously we need to plug it back into the functional equation there are various ways to do this you can put it in the original functional equation or you can plug it into any of these functional equations that we found you know equation 4 3 2 1 you can maybe plug it into any one and it will work out i'll just plug it into the first equation actually right equation number one equation number one was g of f of x is equal to x times g of x plus c the first equation that we obtained now what is f of x bx squared minus ax plus c and what is g of x bx plus a right plus c so g of certain quantity is nothing but b times that quantity plus a right so b times this quantity plus a is nothing but bx squared plus ax plus c okay great so this becomes b squared x squared minus b a x plus b c plus a is equal to b x squared plus a x plus c and maybe let's just club together the x squared terms so this becomes b squared minus b and if i just club in the x terms that becomes a b plus a plus all the constants that becomes c b plus a minus c is equal to zero and this holds for all x belongs to real numbers so in certain equation when all of them belongs to real numbers these all three quantities need to be zero kind of like the equation of um, you know like the method of comparing coefficients it's just something similar to that so anyway so b square minus b needs to be zero a b plus a needs to be zero and c b plus a minus c needs to be zero all three need to simultaneously hold true so effectively b b minus one equals zero and you can just split this up into two cases so case one is b is equal to zero if b is equal to zero a b plus a is equal to zero which implies a is equal to zero 
right? So C B plus A minus C is equal to zero. A zero B zero C has to be zero. So therefore A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to zero. So therefore f of x is equal to g of x and both of them are equal to zero and that's actually correct. This is a valid solution that actually satisfies the functional equation. Okay, great. Let's move on to case number two where b was one. If I plug this back, um, so a b plus a is equal to zero, two a becomes zero, so a is equal to zero. Then we have c b plus a minus c equal to zero. You plug in a is equal to zero, b is equal to one, you'll get c minus c is equal to zero. So this holds for all c belong to real numbers. So a is equal to zero, b is equal to one, and c is equal to c does not matter. So we get f of x equals to x squared plus c, and g of x is equal to x, and this is also true. So we get like two you know, set of solutions. One is when f and g both are zero, and the other one is this one that we've obtained, that f of x is quadratic, x squared plus c, and g of x is just x. So yes, that was a pretty cool question. And the underlying objective, again, to kind of sum it up, was whenever you have like two functions, let to relate the two functions, like f and g, we tried to relate it from equation number three, I believe it was. And once I got that relation, I tried to reduce the given functional equation into only one function. And once I found that function, I just plugged it back into equation number three and found the other function. And after that, I was just plugging it in the original equation to find out the value of these constants. Right, so that's pretty trivial. Okay, so moving on, we have some book sessions of functional equations. We have functional equation with BJ Wenger to Chala and functional equation how to solve them with Christopher G. Small. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem and we want to find all function G belong to R to R with the property that there exists a monotonic function F such that it satisfies this given functional equation for all reals X and Y. So again, you have two, two variables, I'm sorry, two functions and, and two variables, of course, X and Y and two functions additionally. So I get kind of like the similar strategy, maybe to employ it. And if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Data programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.